Well, hey, everybody. How are you? Welcome to World Piano Day 2022. Thanks for joining me, and uh, thanks for joining us. Welcome to those of you on Facebook, as, as well as those of you on YouTube, because we're actually streaming simultaneously today on both platforms. And I got to tell you, we're thrilled to be able to add our contribution to a lot of other special World Piano Day occasions that are going on around the world today that are really just celebrating all things piano. And for us in particular, to really celebrate teaching people the magic that is simply experiencing the joy and fun of making music at a piano. Now, for those of you who I've not met, either in person or kind of virtually online like this yet, my name is Scott Houston, but I'm actually more often either known or, or called <laughs> the piano guy. And it was from my pel public television series that aired for 14 seasons with the same name. And for over 25 years now, which seems impossible, but that's only because I started teaching when I was four, right? I <laughs> I've actually been teaching adults how to simply have fun making music at a piano while playing all non-classical genres like pop, rock, I don't know, standards, jazz, blues, country, gospel, stuff like that. And needless to say, an event like World Piano Day really resonates not just with me, but with everyone here at Piano in a Flash who really spends their days fulfilling our corporate mission of just simply helping people experience the magic of making music. So I'm sure we have a big mix of people from all across the piano spectrum. I've been watching some of the comments coming in. And uh, some of you may have just decided to drop in and are seeing me for the first time. And others who may play a little piano. And, uh, you know, you might be interested in seeing how we do things around here a little bit or just hearing some more piano stuff. And I feel confident we also have a probably pretty decent contingent of current students that are in my Piano in a Flash online method, uh, who I'm sure probably feel the surroundings here in my studio look pretty familiar, huh? <laughs> Gee, I wonder where I shoot all my lessons, huh? No surprise, right? Well, wherever you may happen to fall across that spectrum of all the different people that might be here, a very warm welcome, and know that we're all here today to simply have some fun goofing around a little bit and celebrating World Piano Day for an hour or so on this 88th day of 2022. Now we have a few things on tap for the next 45 minutes or so, including a, uh, I'm going to give you a, a kind of a quick visual tour around the globe of looking at some kind of crazy pianos. And I'm going to teach you a, a couple fun piano tips. One in particular, I'm going to give away the Count Basie ending, something you can always put in your pocket and pull out whenever you need to get out of a tune in a hurry. It's a super fast little, little thing I can teach you. Um, we're going to have a little piano trivia questions for a couple times just for some fun. And we're also going to take a few questions from you so I can hopefully answer anything piano related that you might wonder about. And finally, we are going to be giving away a few great gifts at the end, kind of raffle style, just for just to celebrate World Piano Day, frankly, just decided to give some stuff away. So now I've said we uh, are going to be doing this and all you've seen is me, right? So you're probably wondering who else that entails. Well, without further delay, I want to introduce one of the fantastic team members that I'm really blessed to be surrounded with here at Piano in a Flash. I was thrilled that she accepted my invitation to give me a hand with my hosting duties, duties for today's live stream. So uh, we, you, who you're looking at now is uh, our head of student success from Nashville, Tennessee. This is Hannah Larson. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Scott. It's good to see you today. Happy World Piano Day. Well, thanks. You too. How's everything going down in Nashville? I'm always jealous talking to you in Nashville, knowing it's Music City, right? I mean, it's it's pretty good down here, but I think we're we're missing. We're one piano player short. We need you to come down here and join us. Oh, when you said one piano player, I was looking around thinking, well, who could that be? It's sure not me, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be great. Come down anytime. We could, we could go hit up the honky tonks and do a good show. I would love to do that. No doubt about it. It's fun stuff. Well, it's kind of fun. I don't know if you've been looking before I just introduced you, but it's kind of warming my heart of seeing all the people that are on here and all these piano fans are just having a ball. It's kind of fun to get everybody collected here on these on these streams like this and we're seeing people from all around the globe what are you seeing on that end yeah i mean i i see somebody's in here from sweden so hello to our swedish friends welcome we also have somebody in punta gorda florida i wish i was down in florida right now. uh yeah me too that's kind of my neck of the woods for 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 piano in a flash south area <laughs> i know yeah. i know well, and Go ahead, go ahead, Scott. No, I was going to say, I just wanted to, before, if you've got something else to share, and we're on a little bit of a delay here, so everyone will need to bear with us, but the uh, before you get off, I want you to share a quick recap of, and I've just heard this story before from you, and I just think it's a, a, a fun one to share about kind of your, you know, 
family's piano journey but with you and your father in particular this is kind of i think apropos for probably a lot of people watching today yeah yeah and i'm i'll share it because i know that so many of our students have kind of a similar story so when i was in the second grade i started piano lessons um, my parents would hop me in the car we drive 30 minutes put all of our books in the car go down to downtown and have a lesson. And what might be a little bit unique about my story is that my dad decided, oh, I've always wanted to play piano, so I'll take lessons alongside my daughter. And so we would go and have lessons, right? You know, I would play and then he would play or he would play and then I would play. And when it came time for our recital, um, we decided to do a duet. And so we practiced really hard together. And when it came time to play, um, my dad ended up really embarrassed because he just he butchered the um, the accompaniment part that he, as a 30-something-year-old man, was supposed to play along with his young daughter. And he was so humiliated. All right. Exactly. All right, which one of those? And I, I don't remember that at all, but he's told me now that I'm an adult. He's like, uh, you looked at me and were so embarrassed. And so... Needless to say, my dad stopped playing piano pretty soon after that because he was so humiliated. And I I lasted for about 10 years taking classical piano lessons. And then eventually um, I quit after my piano teacher told me I wasn't practicing enough scales. So she said I didn't have enough of the theory background. And I, I was in every band and orchestra you could be in in high school. I taught myself how to play other instruments. I loved music and I loved music theory, but I kept being told I wasn't trying hard enough. I was, you know, I just wasn't serious enough about music. So I gave it up. And now what, like, it's it's been uh, 10 years since I stopped playing. And now that I started working with you, I've gotten to play and really enjoy it. And my dad, who's on this broadcast today, he's really excited. And I think I've told you this before, Scott, but he said, and this might be inappropriate, but he said that our teacher, um, God rest her soul, is probably turning over in her grave right now because she told us we'd never play piano and now we are because <laughs> his instrument. <laughs> Well, that that's a good thing, not a bad thing. And thanks for sharing. And I guess, you know, just to add to that, what's what I the real reason I wanted you to share that, frankly, is it's spectacular that a you've taken some lessons and that's wonderful and that's a wonderful thing. And I'm sure that that did you very well. But at the same time, you're finding now 10 years later a way to sit down and have some fun playing and similar uh, for your father. Hi, Hannah's dad. I'm glad you're with us. I can't wait to get rolling. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever that happens, it's it's. The point we're getting at, and it's kind of appropriate for World Piano Day, is this is about having fun at a piano. It's kind of what we're all about is saying, look, they, they call it playing piano, not working piano, right? I say that a lot, but for goodness sake, we're not trying to beat our heads against the wall. We're trying to have some fun. So we'll keep that in mind for the next few minutes as we as we go through some of this stuff. And I know, uh, and I mentioned earlier, we are also later in the live broadcast, we're going to give away a few things, right? Like in the raffle thing, right? So on the World Piano Day. Why don't you tell us just a little bit about that? So if anybody's watching, they'll know what's coming up at the end. Right. I would love to. We have some really, really cool prizes lined up for all of our viewers today. So um, one of the prizes that we're going to give away is a two course bundle and three lucky people are going to win this. So that Two course bundle means that you will have lifetime access to two of our courses, and that comes with three different piano books. So two course books and one gig book, and then that lifetime access to our online courses. The other prize that we're giving away is actually Scott's full six course bundle. So that's six courses, lifetime access to six courses, and nine piano books that we'll send in the mail to you. So those are two really awesome prizes. Um, another one I'm really excited about is we're actually going to ship one of you guys a keyboard, a full size keyboard that Scott recommends, a really nice one. We're excited about that. And then the final prize is one that Scott, I don't know that much about, but I might be most excited about this. I heard that you're going to give one one hour long virtual piano session with one of our viewers. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, that we call that the <laughs> we call that the brush with a lack of fame prize or the uh, yeah the first man out prize. The booby prize wins that one, I'm sure. But actually, I'm not 100 percent sure what we're going to do. It really depends on whoever the winner is and whether you know they are playing piano yet or not, and and if so, how much. And I thought you know I'm going to get together and you know call them and just depending on what his or her interests are. I was thinking about you know maybe providing some 
some feedback on some particular tune they play or are working on or maybe, you know, helping somebody get some good, you know, genre-related tips or tricks on something or just answering any questions someone may have. Who knows? However, we'll do it. Uh, and maybe even just sit down. If you don't play at all, I'd be happy to talk about your future piano journey and have some fun you know, conversation, talking about music and piano, which is something I'm never uh, at a loss to do. So I'll figure it out with whomever wins that one. But uh, it'll it'll be fun nonetheless, and I'll commit some time to hang out and have some fun with somebody. So um, for anyone that does wonder about getting in the entry in the raffle, is there still time to do that before we dig in on some more content? You know what? There There is still time. So if you have yet to sign up for the raffle, this is what you can do. Um, your first option is that you see this QR code on the screen. You can take your phone, if you're not viewing this on your phone, and um, open up your camera app, scan that QR code, and it's going to take you to a link. Just click that link, and then you'll be taken to a web page where you can enter your first name and your email address, and then you'll be entered to win um, all of these awesome prizes. The other way that you can get signed up for the raffle is um, there should be a link pinned to the top of your chat in either Facebook or YouTube. So go ahead and click that link. It'll take you to the same web web page that this QR code would take you to and just enter your name and email address and you'll be entered to win. So we'll okay. leave that up for a couple seconds here and um, give everybody a chance to get entered to win. Sounds good. Thank you for that explanation. And yeah, while we leave this up here, just a couple more seconds, if anyone is dealing with that. I do, and I mentioned it at the beginning, but just so you know, we're simultaneously streaming this live to both Facebook and YouTube to pretty big audiences. And frankly, pulling this off is, is requiring a few people on our team all doing brand new things for the very first time. So uh, if something production-wise gets a little screwy or the chat stream gets crazy or busy or something hangs up or anything, I'll accept our apology up front. We're a uh, we're swallowing a pretty big production uh, level up in one big gulp today. So thanks for coming along on the ride with us. And onward and upward, I guess, is all I can say there, right? So we'll get that QR code down now. That's great. And uh, what do you see? Uh, what are we doing now? Well, let's take another look real quick. Anything fun in the chats? Anything checking in on what's going on there? Yeah, I actually have a really cool uh, comment here from Katie or Caddy. I'm thinking it's Katie. Katie says she was a classical pianist for years and uh, she bought your program a while ago and she's had a lot of fun with your song. She said she did um, the do, re, mi. Okay, I don't know this term. Do, re, mi, sol, fa, j system. Sol, fa, sol, fa, right. <laughs> do, re, mi, sa, fa, sa, yeah, do, re, mi, fa, so, right. Nice. So she did that in Hungary growing up. So are you going to show something on? I'm sorry. Sure. I have no, no, no. That's good. I would just say that's, you know, when people say do, ro, e, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. A lot of non, non-American non uh, you know, music education, instead of calling it C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, everything is phrased do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. And then you can move it to different keys. It makes a lot of sense, actually. So remember the old sound of music song, right? The do, a, dear, if you, there you go. That. I know we need to do a performance, Scott. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so she says she grew up playing that way and then got on board with your method. And then she said now she has a lot of fun playing popular music by ear. So we have we have her who grew up in Hungary. I know we have a ton of students in the UK. We have students in Australia. So we're joining from all over the world today, Scott. And we're excited to celebrate World Piano Day, but I have to say I've never done this before. Can you tell us what World Piano Day is all about? <laughs> sure. I actually, you know, when we decided to do this, we, we saw it coming, and I wasn't really familiar. I'd heard about it, but didn't do it. So I did a real quick bit of research, and here's what I found. that World Piano Day was actually only founded in 2015, so it's, what, seven, eight years old, by a German pianist and composer that actually I was already familiar uh, with this guy. His name is Nils Fromm, and his simple yet super fun idea was just to celebrate piano related things all across the world by having people hold some events like performances or master classes or lectures or you know things like this and it's just been gaining steam and popularity every year and I I guess I suppose the fact that here we are doing something fun this year with all sorts of people all over the globe just kind of bears that out so it's happily been taken up by kind of all facets of the piano world from performers to you know promoters and distributors and the piano manufacturers and and uh, you know just all the way down to a bunch of piano Piano enthusiasts, which is the category I'm sure most of us fall into. So the thing that I really got a chuckle out of it, just because I've got such a juvenile sense of <laughs> humor, is just that it uh, it's always held on the 88th day of the year in a somewhat obvious commemoration of the 88 notes found on a full-size piano. 
So that's what got all this foolishness started. Now I love that. I mean, any any chance to celebrate is a good one, but especially when it has to do with making music and just enjoying life. I mean, I know you're all for it. I am too. Uh, that's right. You know what? I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I kind of cut you off. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and jump in. I want to get something on the piano here. Give these guys a little something to chew on piano wise. So I'm going to give away uh, now. I'm going to give away a little. Uh, it's really called the Count Basie lick or the Count Basie ending. And it's always fun when you play in this style because, you know, not everything is notated. You know, you can't, you can't read notes verbatim when you're reading lead sheets the way we teach. Yeah, and uh, so it's, you need to kind of know a few intros and a few endings and things like this. Well, this one's a classic one. So let's take a look at the keyboard here, and I'll show you. It's just I was trying to think of something I could show people all across the spectrum of talent, piano-wise, in case you didn't know it. And this is so simple. Even if you've never touched a piano, you could do it. But you've all heard this thing before, and I'll just I'll play a couple measures up to it if the tune's getting ready to end, right? And it's, you know... Are you right? Right? <laughs> that's it. It's this little thing. Well, that's something that Count Basie was known to do, and it was kind of one of his signature licks at the end of tunes. And this is all it is. It's incredibly simple. The, the tune will, a tune almost always ends on its, on its root chord, or if you didn't know that, the chord it ends on is actually the key of the tune. But so, so I'm going to give it away in C. So say the last chord of the tune is a C. And then here's all you play. I'll do it down one octave so you can see it a little better. Your pinky in the right hand goes on the root. So in this case, it was a C chord. We're going to be sitting on a C. And then the other note below it, there's just three. It starts out on F, then to E flat, and then slide up a half note to E. So it's this. It's those three. I probably, I don't know what I do when I really play it. I guess I do it with the thumb after that first one, but not that the fingering matters. You do it however your big or short or long skinny or cocktail wiener looking fingers feel like doing it. It doesn't really matter as long as you get it played. So it's, and it's that rhythm. So again, if you have to hear it kind of in a, in a, you know, in, in texture, I guess, if you, and there's the end of the tune. And then it's kind of nice at the very end to just jump down and hit hit whatever the root is, or even down below. And I know you can't see my fingers. So there we go. Okay. So there you go. There's the Count Basie ending. Um, yeah, you can come back there. So the, uh, yeah, come back from the Count Basie ending. Now you can, at any time you can sit down and, and if, uh, you know, you just want to do it at a piano and someone says, what are you playing there? You can kind of look all kind of in the know and a little debonair and say, hey, I just gave you the Count Basie ending. <laughs> All right. So there you go. There's that. Now, I'm going to um, kind of take a left turn from playing piano for a minute. Now we're just going to kind of do some more goofy stuff, and I'm going to shift toward the actual instrument itself. Now, since it's, this is Piano Day event, right, and, and it really does truly seem to be global in scope, and even the people that are on this, let me take you on a super quick kind of photographic tour around the world to see some crazy pianos from all around, all right? So here we go. All right, let me get this show. I'm going to do this. So here's Scott the Piano Guy's goofy world tour of somewhat interesting pianos, <laughs> all right? So we're going to start off right here at the beginning. How about the world's oldest piano? Aha. All right, this is the Cristofari 1720, right? This piano, uh, it again, they've dated it right around 1720. It actually sits, as we speak, in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and it's really one of the earliest creations of a fellow by the name of Bartolomeo Cristofari, who is kind of known as the inventor of the piano. This one's actually one of three in the world, I think, that are all right around this age within a few years. Now, just in case you've never heard this origin story before, this is kind of interesting, actually. The full name of, of, you know, our beloved instrument, it's, people always refer to it as the pianoforte, which kind of literally translates to the soft loud, <laughs> which it sounds kind of, uh, kind of uh, inside out, right? But actually, the full description that was given to it at first when, when, Cristofari invented it was the Gravasembolo col piano e forte, which I'm sure I just totally butchered my Italian, so I apologize to any Italian speakers that are listening to this. But what that meant was it's the harpsichord that can play soft and loud. And that's really what Cristofari was aiming for, because prior to a piano, 
instruments such as harpsichord or clavichord, you know, other keyboard instruments, they couldn't really be played with any significant volume changes. And the piano that he invented kind of changed all that because the strings were struck by hammers that could, you know, depending on how hard we hit the keys, we can control how hard those hammers, you know, strike the strings. And so those different velocities then give you, you know, higher or lower volumes. And that's versus plucking the strings, which is what goes on in a harpsichord. It's a little thing called a quill. It grabs the string and plucks it. And that's not only what gives it its unique sound, but it also causes it to have a pretty consistent volume. So there you go. So that was one of the big advances that pianos could be played. The piano as we know it was the first thing that could be a uh, keyboard instrument that could be actually played in different in different volumes, all right? Now one last thing to note, and uh, again, pardon the pun there every time I say note, is that the original piano only had 54 keys, if you would count those on this Cristofari versus a full-size keyboard today having 88. So thank goodness we've got 88 or we would have had to celebrate World Piano Day around February 24th, right? <laughs> now something else that was funny that I saw when I, oops, sorry, that I was looking for, and I saw this other picture, this is the same piano, and I saw this shot of that same piano with the Met, is I sure hope they have more than the little, uh, please do not touch, that little white thing at the bottom if you can't see it. There's just this little tiny cardboard paper tent that says, please do not touch on the floor. And I mean, <laughs> as, as we all know, when people are around pianos, right, they, uh, about every other kid that walks by wants to jump up and play something on the darn thing. So I bet that security guy in the back is like fending off kids all day long trying to get up there and you know, play play classic things like this. The you know all that stuff, or the how about the <laughs> right? Everybody's trying to play her. You know, <laughs> all played on the Cristofari. So I'm like, get your hands off that thing, right? All right, let's move on. How about from the kind of sublime, beautiful Cristofari to the ridiculous, and I kind of gave it away there a second. How about the world's <laughs> most narrow piano? All five notes, right? This ridiculous looking thing. Ta-da! It's got only five notes. Hey, you can't practice scales on it. It's only two chords to learn. This has got to be the world's in easiest piano to learn to play, right? Check this out. <laughs> I love this. Hey, only one hand it needed. Think of the multitasking possibilities. You could... You could practice your piano and uh, comb your hair at the same time. So if that's not the most ridiculous looking thing ever, it, it did make me laugh, however, which is important not only to life but to piano students. And remember I said it before, this is all about having some fun. So it's kind of nice to laugh and think about playing piano versus working piano. So don't ever forget that on World Piano Day. This is about fun stuff. And now we're going to push from the least number of keys to, you guessed it, the most number of keys. Is it the... Bosendorfer Imperial. It's a 97 key Imperial Bosendorfer Concert Grand. This one, I, although the picture is only of the bottom one, this has nine extra notes on the bottom and it's made in Vienna, Austria. It's kind of nice of my thought to turn those nine extra keys black at the bottom just to keep from confusing anybody. <laughs> like, hey, where'd those come from, right? But you'd think that might be the 97 key might be the biggest one, but no, 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 no. Instead, it's the Australian Stuart & Sons 108 key Bellura. I think I'm saying that right. Bellura, maybe? I don't know. Can you believe that? That is a giant key, 108 keys, right? So in that case, this is... Uh, this is pretty much like a double wide. <laughs> this was funny, too, when I looked at this second picture. Check out the double wide two-seater bench. <laughs> you, you, I guess you can bring a friend along to help wipe your brow from the effort it takes to play a piano that big. It's like, hey, honey, can you give me a sandwich? I'm, I'm getting wiped out. I've been playing this giant thing. And I also noticed, if you look really closely on that picture, you may not be able to see it. They also have four pedals on that thing. I have absolutely no clue what that fourth pedal does, but the whole thing is a little bit overwhelming. All right. Now, finally, to wrap up this this quick worldwide tour with the biggest of the big. We're now going to move from Australia to Latvia. How about the world's largest upright piano? Ta-da! Look at that. This baby is the Clavins M450 Vertical Concert Grand. It's about 15 feet tall. That's about four and a half meters. And it's eight feet wide, and you need to climb a ladder to play it. So, hey, at least you get a workout before you get to practice, right? On the bright side, though, it's only 12 inches deep, so you can push that monster right up against the wall. That's, of course, as long as it's a very, very tall wall. So, Now, not to get all technical right here at the end of this quick tour, but for those of you, now we're going to bring some physics into this hour. 
just in case you're interested, because I was, I'm like, for goodness sake, what'd they do that for? There really is kind of a legit acoustic reason that the designer of this one kind of attacked the problem in the way he did and, and set this thing up like this. And it has to do with, and this is something I didn't know until I looked at this, to get very low notes on a piano, to produce those low notes, the strings either need to get thicker, which they do. Anybody that has a piano can peek in there and take a look at it. They either need to get thicker or they need to be under less tension. And I guess both of those things, the, the thicker and the less tension you get, it starts causing harmonic distortion. And Or, or, you may have guessed it, the other way you can get those low notes is from longer strings. So, the incredible height lets this piano use thinner more flexible bass strings. So to give you a sample or a, a kind of a comparison, a Steinway Concert Grand's absolutely longest string is just about 80 inches, and this tall boy's longest string is almost double that at 154 inches, or that's just under 13 feet, one string. So, <laughs> wow. All right, the physics lesson is over. There's our tour of the world's most moderately interesting pianos. So there. Uh, you know, now we come back. Hannah, do you feel smarter about your uh, your potentially useless piano knowledge than you did a few minutes ago? I feel much smarter, but I'm also kind of dizzy with it. I'm just, I, <laughs> I can't decide if I would rather have the super tall piano or the super small piano. That The guy with the small piano looked very serious about it, so it really drew me in. I really thought, you know, there's something about that five-note piano. It's, I should... Know, something I should fess up. Sorry, I, I actually found that this, and I don't know the guy's name. I probably should have given him better credit, and I was going through and preparing for this. But there are some hilarious, this fellow is actually a very good, very good concert pianist, and he does these hilariously comedic videos of him messing around with that teeny tiny piano, and there it's, it's, it's great. It's kind of a la Victor Borga. So if someone, I don't even know his name, but if somebody wants to chase that down, you could probably find it on YouTube later. I hate to feel like I'm stealing his thunder. It was really funny stuff. Well, that could be part of our homework for afterwards. Just go there learn about go. the five-note piano and also find whatever weird pianos we can find as well. Yes. Uh, but speaking of homework, Scott, you mentioned earlier that we were going to do some trivia. So I was yes. wondering, would it be okay if I ask everybody to join us in some trivia questions? She shoots, she scores. Let's do it. Woo! Perfect. Okay. So this is how this is going to work, everybody. I'm going to read a trivia question that's going to come up on the screen. Scott's going to play us some wonderful music, and I'm going to invite all of you to put your answers to the question in the chat feature. So whether you're on Facebook or YouTube, just pop your answer into the chat feature. So are we ready for that first question? Coming right question up. For one. The piano was invented in 1709 by a harpsichord in what country? Was it A, Belgium, B, Germany, C, France, or D, Italy? <laughs> the answer is Italy. D, right, you right. listened to Scott's wonderful Italian accent earlier. You might have heard that. Perfect, perfect. Are we ready for our second question, Scott? Okay, Let's do it. everyone, which of these is not a famous piano manufacturer? Hmm. Is it A, Stradivarius, B, Bosendorfer, C, Steinway, or D, Baldwin? Scott, give us a few seconds here. Play us some music while everyone's really hard about this. All right, your final answer's in, everybody, and the answer is A, Stradivarius. Stradivarius is not a famous piano manufacturer. No. 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 That's a violin, right, Scott? Bzzz, on Stradivarius. No. That was not it. That was not it. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. How many keys are on a standard piano? Is it A, 61, B, 81, C, 88, or D, 98? Everyone get those answers in. I sure hope you were listening. Because <laughs> the answer is C, 88. There's 88 <laughs> keys on a piano. That's it. It's That's 88. It. There. I need to get my chops, my old, uh, you know, playing at a baseball game chops back together. <laughs> I'm pulling out all the all the classics, right? You got to play the take me out the ball game, all those things. So, 
All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I hope you all pass that test. Not that it was the most uh, brainiac thing in the entire world, but hey, we're not trying to do an IQ test here. This is just World Piano Day. And now that we've asked some questions of you, how about we let you ask some questions of us? Does that sound good? That's a great idea. Okay. Scott, we've had some, we've had some good questions coming in into the chat. Are you able to hear me? I am. I'm good. Okay. Um, okay. So one question that I saw in the chat, which I get a lot of times from our students, is how, how can students stay motivated? It can be pretty overwhelming to stick with lessons. You know, I really think, I just saw from our thing that there's some distortion on this mic, so I apologize. I'll try to be a little bit quieter and not yelling into my mic. Um, the, I, I think I have a great answer for that, and particularly for adults. I don't know if this applies to children, but for adults, the answer to staying motivated is to play tunes that you want to play, right? I mean, there's mm -hmm. no one gets motivated spending a lot of time trying to get good at playing the Wigwam song. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, no one wants. To, so, you know, as an adult, you really want to play something that you want to play for somebody. So, you know, you've got to find a tune, whether that's, you know, some old standard, you know, whatever, you know, whatever that may be. I guess the the reality is uh, that that you want to find a tune that you want to play. You know, I think the more you find a tune that you want to play. And the quicker you can get to it, even if it's in a very simple mode, the more likely you are to be motivated to stay. And that's kind of the, the secret sauce, I guess, I've learned over 25 years of teaching adults. You can't ask an adult to spend six or eight months or a year or two years playing either exercises or scales or doing something until they get to a point where they're playing a tune that they really want to play. Now, the great news is by not having to read notation fully the way we do it when you read lead sheets, you can really play almost any tune, even if it's a tougher tune, it can kind of be simplified if you just choose to play simpler chords with it. So it's kind of the great equalizer that I can say to someone, instead of traditional notation where you say, hey, we cannot play this etude until you read well enough to read that etude. Well, in the case of a lead sheet where you're saying, I'm just going to read some chord symbols and I'm going to read a one note melody line. So as long as you can read that one note melody line, no matter what the tune is, you can get through it. Because Again, a, a tune doesn't have thousands of chords in it. It's got a handful of chords. And so if you're going to have to learn a few chords, why not learn the chords to the tune you want to play the most first, if that makes sense? You know, get to that point. And I have just, I have proven over and over, I think, or it's been my experience anyway, and when I mean over and over, I mean thousands of times in 25 years, that it, that's how I can hook somebody as a student. You know, I... I got gotcha. <laughs> you. Know, if I can say to somebody, you know, what's the tune you really are dying to play? And you may not be playing the hippest version of it, or you're not going to go out and work a gig the next week. But if you can get some kind of simple tune underhand and say, son of a gun, I am actually sitting down and playing this daggone thing. And if you, it, that's the secret to our success for our students. And then once you do that, you kind of, you know, once you can taste the ice cream, you know how sweet it is and you want more of it. And then that gives you the incentive to keep going. So for whoever asked that, I would say, if you're really cranking on something that you're not enjoying, quit cranking on it. Just blow it off. You know, because you can't do one single thing doesn't mean you can't do this other giant world of stuff, right? And it's, you know, it's a funny thing. It's a, I'll try to stop my ramble here, but Learning in the style we do, it's kind of being in one place and you can go in a bunch of different directions. And if you absolutely hit your head against the wall going one direction, well, quit beating your head against the wall. Turn around and go the other. <laughs> if you're having some hand coordination thing that is just absolutely driving you fits, yes, it would be spectacular to get through that and you may want to try to do it and keep chipping away. But don't let, you know, because you can't do one thing, don't let that uh, infect your mind and think that you can't do the other 90% of fun things that maybe don't involve that. So if you're tired of playing something too fast, go play more ballads. If you're tired of playing blues tunes, play something that has a few more chords in it. So you kind of, it, it, it's not as linear or as uh, as perfectly outlined as, as a lot of traditional classical piano lessons are. And I I think that's the key. I mean, to wrap it up is you've got to find things that you're enjoying. You've got to play piano, not sit and grind piano. And, you know, you're not doing, at least our students, we're not trying to go out and make a living as a pianist. We're not trying to go out and play concerts. We're trying to sit down and have some fun playing a tune. And, you know, let's 
sit down and have a cup of coffee or pour a glass of wine and play some tunes. And man, I think that's my answer. Play, find a tune you really want to play. Work on that one. You're going to have to learn some chords anyway. You may as well learn the chords to the tune you like the most first. Yeah, I, I love that answer. It actually makes me want to hop up and just leave you guys and go play on my <laughs> piano. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it, it does lead me to one question we have from um, Frank. Frank's wondering about you specifically. In your courses, you teach a lot of different chords and teach us how to improvise. But what are your favorite chords to improvise over? Would you be willing to show us? Sure. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly nothing to give away. I, uh, I'm trying to think probably I can... Yeah, that's probably a good one. I can think... Um, That's probably to do a one six two five or one six four five, and I, you don't need to even know what that is. Here we go. I'll do this. Here we go. Um, if those of you that have never played in your life, don't freak out. Those of you that play a little bit, this will I can use some terms. But here's all I'm doing is I'm going to start out with something called a C chord. All right, this this the first white note to the left of a set of two black notes. Right, this one right here. That's a C. So that's a C. That's a C. That's a C. That's and I'm not going to go in more than that, but that's how you can find this note. So just put your hands down and play a note, skip a note, play a note, skip a note, play a note. So play those three notes. It's called a triad, a C triad or a C major scale. All right. Just find those three notes. Now, so the, the chord progression we're going to use is from there. We're going to move down two notes. Exact same hand position, right? I mean, you could put a fork that w that fit this, you know? If you if you found a barbecue tongs that, that were exactly that shape, you could use those, right? So, and it doesn't matter what fingers you use. You don't have to use these. I'm pulling my fingers back just so you, I do this a lot over this camera shot so everyone can see what I'm playing. But if you want to use different notes, or I mean different fingers, it's fine. Just get that played, right? So here we go. You got those three. Now we're going to go down to an A. So you just, I'm sorry, you just go down two notes, right? And then go down two more, and then come up one. So exact same position. Don't worry about what all three notes are. Just worry about the note that you're starting it on, and keep the rest of your hand in the same position. So if I did it on this one, it would be, I'm going down two, another two, come back one. Okay? I could get all theory on you and say that's called a one, six, four, five. But you don't need to know that right? You just need to, to hear that. Now here's why it's fun to improvise on. And you can also, if you, if you play a little bit more, you can add a fourth note, right? You skip one more note and play a fourth note. Works beautiful like that too, right? So C major seven, A minor seven, F major seven, G seven. You could do that. So here's why this is kind of a fun one. This is kind of a I don't know the right way to say this. It's almost like giving a little, uh, it's like putting some, some guardrails. You know, like when you go bowling and they've got that gutter thing <laughs> that you, can, you can't shoot your, shoot your ball over. This is kind of a, one of those for beginning improvising because as long as you stick to these four chords and do that and use them in that order, you're really free to play anything you want on any white note in your right hand, all right? And some will sound better than others, but at, at a limit, just you can play just about anything you want, and, and that usually makes people's brains explode. They're like, what do you mean anything you want? What am I supposed to play, Scott? For goodness sake, isn't it written somewhere? <laughs> I'm like, no, this is not about writing. This is about you just playing something. So anything you want to play. All right. All right. <laughs> and then if you keep doing it longer and longer, you start playing crazier things like that. But the point is, if I just stick to the white notes, and you'll find out there are times that some notes don't sound super sonically comfortable with that chord. Wow, that one counted kind of weird with this chord. No, that didn't work with that one very well either. Ah, well, did on that one. It's the root. All right. The point is, if you just noodle around, hold your pedal down if you want to do it really slowly. Right. 
and it's a good choice to use some of the notes that you're holding down. So I don't, I'll, I'll leave that alone. But that's a great, simple improvisational thing to just do a one, six, four, five, if you want to think of it that way, or for those of you that don't know those, just... And then you can really be free to play about any white notes you want, and I think that's a good little kind of a shove off the cliff into the world of improvisation that will not that won't just eat you up mentally. And you know, it won't sound like the hippest thing in the world at the beginning, but the more you do it, and the more you you just start understanding, oh wow, maybe I do have the freedom to play these things. And I think it really helps people that are kind of locked into reading from the sheet versus being able to just sit down and play. It's a I, I fully understand how hard that is. Some people think that's a, a menial thing to try to break from the notes if you've taken a lot of classical lessons, and it's not menial. It's a huge kind of a mind mind break you've got to make, and stuff like that helps do that. So hopefully that'll help. Yeah, I think it. I think it will a lot, and I think it kind of answers a couple other questions that we had come up in the chat. We had somebody ask um, how important it is to to be able to read music. And like you said, and like you say over and over again in your courses, like there's nothing wrong with playing music, but, or reading music, right. but it's when it stops you from playing music, right? It's, it's, it's you get so wrapped up. This is my problem. I get so wrapped up in reading notes. I struggle to have fun and play. Yes. I, I think I can make this one fairly succinct before we probably need to move on. I don't know about the time, but uh, yeah, this one fairly succinctly in, in our world, um, don't, Never forget that, that notation, written notation, is no more music than than written words are speech, right? It's a pretty good analogy, I think. I talk about that. You know, reading a book is not the same as speaking, you know, or orating in some way. Reading music is certainly not music. Notation is simply a recording device. And I've always, I've always said kind of funny thing for a long time. I've thought, I bet if for technology reasons, back when the monks were developing music notation or whoever was doing it, had they had the ability to record something and they had a little Walkman that they could record something on, I bet that notation may have never been <laughs> invented or would have been dramatically easier. But back then there was no way to record anything you know, A-U-R-A-L. A -U -R -A -L. And so this very, it's a really weird thing to me to try to record something in one dimension in some other written thing. And, and I think sometimes people kind of get the cart before the horse and think that the reading is more important than the playing. And just understand that the only reason you read music is to get you playing. So the simpler that can happen, the better. And when you have to read lead sheets the way we play, um, you never have to read more than a single note at a time. So it, it just takes about 90% of the traditional difficulty and kind of throws it out the window. And it's not a shortcut. It's not cheating in any way. It just, it's kind of the nature of the beast. It just is what it is. We don't, re we don't rely on someone else's arrangement to play a tune. We just want the, the, the DNA of the song. And what's a DNA of a piece of music? The melodic line and the harmony. And on a lead sheet, that's, that's comprised of a one-note melody line and the chord changes. And then it's up to us to do what we do to make music instead of just regurgitate what someone else has written. So there. I'll leave it at that. Right. Okay. I, I love that. that. That really is the thing that's freed me up so much in playing Good. my own music. Um, but there's... we And we do have time to answer um, another quick question, oh, Scott. Cool. I, Great. Well, actually, there's kind of two questions. This is a thing that I see come up a lot with um, our students and people who are considering becoming piano students. Uh, there's always a roadblock. Every, every single person has one thing that they're hung up on in their head. For me, it was, I have to have music in front of me. Okay. Um, two other roadblocks that we, we see our students experience, and I'm seeing it in the chat right now, is I don't have a piano or... Oh. I'm old, I'm getting older and my hands hurt. So I was wondering, two questions, Scott, see if you can keep these both in your head at one time. One, what do you recommend for people to look out for when they're looking for a new keyboard? And that second question is, what words of wisdom do you have for people who think their hands might, might not be as spry as they once were? Um, the first one's really easy. The second one's not so easy. The, the keyboard one is, you know, the, we are living in a spectacular age if you're a fan of piano, because n the acoustic pianos are all, and they're not all good, but there is a plethora of really good quality pianos all along the, the price point. But even better, the digital pianos in the last 10 to 15 years have just, just gotten spectacularly good. So if you really don't have a piano and you're starting and you're, you know, you're kind of working your way up and no one would rather sit down and play a, a beautifully well-tuned, I, I might add, a well-tuned acoustic grand piano, 
you know, there's when it's not well tuned or it's kind of a funky old piano, I'd rather play it digital because they sound great and they are perfectly in tune. And so, kind of the I don't know a laundry list. I'm probably missing some of these, and your customer service team can help anybody with that because they they've got a better list than I do that mm-hmm. we really work through. But I we usually try to say what I think above 62 keys, maybe 72 keys, something like that. So it doesn't have to be a full size keyboard, but to play in our styles, you really want you know at least 60, 70 keys usually, I think. You want something called weighted action, as in weights, and that that's what makes a piano feel like a piano instead of an organ feel like a pian- uh, an organ instead of spring-loaded keys. So get weighted action, um, and really there's a lot of bells and whistles on a lot of digital pianos and digital keyboards. By far the most important is a really good acoustic piano sound, a really good acoustic bass sound, and a really good what's called a Fender Rhodes or electronic piano sound, and I would guess that maybe also add a, a, a Hammond B3 sound, but I would guess that 98% of the time you're playing it, it'll be on one of four those four sounds. Um, so that that's kind of where we go. Make sure you've got a pedal, obviously. Um, yeah, but, you know, the vast majority of even remotely, you know, decent pianos, they all fit that bill today, and they didn't used to, and the, there's never been a better time at a price point reason to, for someone to be able to get into uh, a, a legitimate instrument versus kind of one of those little toys that you used to buy at Walmart's that were two two octaves long and and the keys weren't the right size or any of that. So there's my piano story. Um, and I hope I didn't all offend right. any any stores or any manufacturers possibly watching this because they're all they're all good ones. But um, on the hand thing, and it's interesting you ask that actually because I'm uh, we're <laughs> a I'm getting to an age where that might be an issue for me. B, we are getting more questions about that, and they're they're sliding up to me, Hannah. You're right, and I think, well, just you know, using your hands helps, right? I mean, the more you're using it, and I think what happens a lot of time with our students when they're starting to do things they just never ask their hands to do. If we can, can you switch to the? Thank you. I'm going to switch to my hand shot here just a second. Um, um, it's a funny thing. A lot of people, they, if they're just starting. They they've just never they'll say oh my word my my like my fourth finger it won't move without my pinky or it's stuck to my middle finger I can't get it to I try to move one and the other one won't oh I can't lift it right and I go oh I can't move it away the reality is you're probably asking your hands to do something if you you know if you're above the age of fifty you possibly if you've never played piano as a younger human or as a uh, you know, a student or anything, you're possibly asking your fingers to do something you've never asked it to do in its life, which is to lift up by itself, right? To do that. <laughs> you're like, wait a minute, I can't do that. Some people, they just won't happen. They'll come up together and they can't, they can't get their fingers to, to unstick. So one thing to do is just, and this is going to sound so juvenile, but I've, I've laughed and I've done this with, I've suggested this to people for years. If you're really just starting, you know, like when you're at a when you're at a, you know, here you are sitting and you've got the steering wheel in your hand and you're frustrated and you're at a red light and you're waiting for somebody to go and you're late somewhere and you're sitting here doing this. But a dump, but a dump, but a dump, right? Everyone can do this, and everyone can go from their pinky toward their thumb. Sorry, I get under there. Everyone can do this really easily. And try to do it separately. Don't let these fingers come down together. But ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 right? Everyone can do that. But if you've never played piano, it's kind of a bear. Do it from the thumb out. Go the other direction. Dun, 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 dun. Go that way. And I bet it will, <laughs> people that have never played will go, ka-chunk, and all the fingers will come down together. Cut a chunk cut a chunk right? Just every time you're sitting at a table, you're sitting, you know, waiting for an appointment, you're in your car, just sit and tap on something going the other direction from the thumbs out. Ba-da-da-da-da. Ba-da-da-da-da. I think that helps a lot getting your ring finger to kind of unfreeze from either your middle or your pinky. And I know that just sounds like this is just too juvenile and simple a thing to do, but I'm telling you, I think that helps a lot. Then once you get to that point, if you really are having arthritis problems, you know, I'm certainly no doctor, but you know, what I've heard is that, you know, use it or lose it kind of thing, right? And I think just doing some simple hand exercises, just up and down, you know? And I'm not suggesting going and playing scales for, you know, 15, 20 minutes at a time. But the way I make these exercises a little more fun, or I suggest to do them, is instead of just trying to play them perfectly straight and do the old, you know, you know, that, do put some rhythm in there. You know, you know, just do something, make up some rhythm pattern, you know, <laughs> like a, 
mm-hmm. you know, something like that. Do something that's going to imitate what you're really going to play in the wor- real world. I would never go out. I can't imagine a tune I would play out working a gig that's going to f- make me want to do this. You know, it just doesn't happen. When you're really playing, you're... <laughs> You know, something like that. I don't know. You're just, you're very seldom are you going to be, you know, marching like, going through like your little soldiers. You know, do, do, do. So do something fun. Make it fun. Play through some things. We've actually got a, uh, I'm glad I just thought of this before I get this. It just hit me. We've got a, uh, there's probably 35 or 40 on our YouTube page, uh, which is Piano Guy TV, youtube.com slash Piano Guy TV. Those of you streaming from YouTube, you're, you're on it. Um, there is a whole what do you call it, a playlist? Am I using the right term? Old guy question right there. Yeah, playlist, yeah. right? Yeah, there's a there's a playlist we have with 30 or 40 of these. I call them take five exercises. And they literally are time to spend five minutes doing before you get in to do something you enjoy. So, uh, you know, my, my end of that is don't think you're going to to brute force your way through any of that stuff of your fingers not being, it's just going to take you doing a little bit. And and it's it's just a little work every day. Don't do more than five minutes because you'll just, you'll hate yourself. And then you won't, you won't see your piano with a smile on your face. You'll look at it like work. And that's what we're trying to stay away from. So everybody can check that out. There's some good ones. You can go through those take five exercises. That might be a good answer. That's a great idea. And, and I wanted to say too, um, everybody's hitting these different roadblocks as we play like that's part of learning something new that's part yeah. of coming back to old skill and uh, my my team our customer success team is so excited every time we get to work with a new student um, as they hit these roadblocks like that's part of what we're here for so right. um there's a lot of other really great questions in the chat right now and i want to encourage all of you if you didn't have your question answered today which i know a lot of you we we aren't going to have time to go into that please reach out to us at our support team we are support at piano in a flash.com support at piano in a flash.com just send us those questions and we'll be really really happy to answer you and help you we've got we've got scott who helps answer the questions we have another piano expert she's awesome we have a really great team who's excited to help so shoot those questions our way but scott i know i think it's right yeah this is exciting it's all right we're ready to announce the winners of the raffle right yes it so i I'm going to tell you guys how this is going to work. I am going to first, I will say what prize we're about to announce. And then Scott's going to play some music as we do our drawing. And then I will announce the winners. And the way I'm going to say it is I will say your name. And if we have it, your last initial. And then just in case it could be a little bit confusing, because there might be a couple, you know, Bill S's out there or whatever your name is. We're also going to say where your, um, what email address you have not your full email address just the last part so it could be bill s at gmail.com so i hope that makes and then to confirm it as soon as we do that we're going to shoot an email your way within a few minutes so now that all the logistics are out of the way scott (laughs) we are going to draw for our two course bundle the first winner of our two course bundle get us some intense music here we go okay our first winner is Paul D. Paul D. And he has a Yahoo email a- address. Congratulations, right. Paul. He's a winner Paul, of our two Paul D. with a Yahoo address. Yes, All right. Paul D. as in dog. All right. Our next winner of the two-course bundle is... I give us some... <laughs> Barbara J. Barbara oh, yeah. J. <laughs> at msn.com congratulations barbara we'll be sending you an email soon and now we have a third winner of this two course bundle are you ready the suspense is high the winner of this two course bundle is Ann. Ann. ann w w at sbcglobal.net we'll be sending you an email soon all right our next prize. This winner will receive Scott's full six course bundle. That's lifetime access mm. to six courses and nine piano books that we'll send your way. Um, and we'll also top or we'll also toss in a webinar bonus that Scott gives out sometimes at webinars. We'll give that to you as well. So are you ready? The winner This is a big one. This is the full bundle, right? This is, this huge. is the whole this course. Is huge. 
This retails at $899, $899 value, right? You'll hear this bundle goes to Lori. Lori. Lori, we don't have your last initial, but Lori, if you are a Lori at gmail.com, pay attention. We'll be sending you an email here shortly. Right. All right, Scott. Congratulations, this Lori. Keyboard. Congratulations, Lori. So now we just spent a little bit of time talking about what kind of keyboard we would want everybody to have. So we know we want a weighted keyboard. We want it to have a minimum number of keys. We're going to make sure that this next winner receives that kind of keyboard. Um, highly recommended by Scott. And the drawing is happening right now. I'm watching our tech. Let's see. No. Coming. It's Diane. Diane B. B as in boy. Diane B. Congratulations. You are Diane B. And your email address is at gmail.com. You are a winner of a brand spanking new keyboard. And we're going to get that into the mail to you soon. Be looking in your inbox. We'll send you an email soon to get your address and everything. But now, Scott. I know. You are about to find out who you're going to spend an hour with. I think this is the one I, I think this is the one I should pay them to have to put up with me for 60 straight <laughs> minutes. So. <laughs> Maybe, may may but I'm really excited for this person. Um, okay, so the drawing is starting. Our team's working on that. Private one-on-one -on -one session. One hour with Scott Houston, the piano guy. And it's... Yeah, here it comes. Donna Jo S. Donna Jo S. All right. At gmail.com. Donna Joe, I'm so excited for you. You're going to have a blast with Scott. He is such a great teacher. He, he will he'll I know. teach you bad how to do that. Bad piano jokes are on the way, Donna Joe. So glad you did it. We'll, I'll get in touch with you, and we'll yeah. figure out what we're going to do. Yeah. Well, congratulations, everybody. Like I said, watch your inbox. We'll be sending you an email shortly from um, support at pianoinaflash.com, and we'll get all that information we need from you. And this has been fun, Scott. It has. And we're thinking about doing some more of these type of things. Obviously, this was a good launch to do it on World Piano Day. But may, we may uh, have some things up our sleeve to kind of kind of resurrect the uh, live streams. We did these a few years ago, and we may be doing some more. And it's, uh, yeah, it's just fun to have some, some people on board. It used to be a solo event for me, and I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot more with some people around. So, listen, we really, uh, we probably need to wrap this up. Are we there? Yeah, just almost exactly that time. Um, yeah, we... Super happy that you guys are welcome to join us. It was super fun to hang out a little bit. Even more than that, it's super great that there's a number of people bumping around this globe that are interested in piano and that are having fun playing. And no matter what style you play, no matter what genre you're into, and it doesn't have to be what we're into, I wish the best for serious classical players ever. And it's the coolest thing in the world to do. So yay for you guys, too. It just doesn't happen to be the, the route we go down, typically. But this is all about making music. And what I think really makes everybody, it's one of the uniquely human things, is our ability to create. And, you know, to be able to, to take, I guess, some chords, some melody, to, it's just the magic of music. And to be able to just emote a little bit and maybe, you know, here comes this version of this tune at this time. And may it never come out that way ever again. It is kind of the absolute, you know opposite of trying to perfect something this isn't about perfection it's about creation and to be able to play i think is a is a wonderful thing for for all of us and i i always hope that in the all the efforts we put forth for all this time and like i said it truly is our mission at piano in a flash to just get people having some fun playing some piano and i think the uh i i think to kind of have someone experience that will 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 make them better than than before so thanks for all joining us thanks for everyone to help put this on um we'd be happy to answer any other questions if something came up we'll do all we can i've just got the the group i'm surrounded with now the support team is just unbelievably good and i'm just so proud of having everybody rowing in the same direction and that includes you too han i sure appreciate the help uh, hosting this thing Thanks, Scott. I've, I've really enjoyed celebrating World Piano Day with the piano guy himself. Yeah. How lucky yeah. could I be? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's a, they're all greatness. And, and to give a little uh, credit due, we have Jill and Irene. And uh, who else is back here? We got Teresa back here helping out on the boards. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it's 
Oh, Mary's who I missed. Mary, thank you to everybody. So, uh, you know, we did, before we finally hop off, we're really going to say goodbye here. Just to let you know, we did put together a great promotion, um, if anyone is interested, uh, for our particular stuff. And you can find out about it by going to this link. We're going to put another QR code up here once we, we sign off here in just a second. We'll just leave it up for a few minutes. And so if you're interested and you may want to dip your toe in the water and you think we might be a good fit, feel free to click on that QR code and it'll take you over to a, to a deal we have on our site. So um, we'll probably still get that link in the chat streams as well. So I guess with that, Hannah, I will say goodbye to you for now. And uh, we will wave to everyone all over the world that was with us. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll go ahead and say goodbye. Happy World Piano Day, everybody. Bye-bye.